So they finally caught the guy. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. So if that's also your thing, consider subscribing or checking out some of my other videos. Somebody has finally been arrested for those West Seattle suitcase murders. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will recap very, very quickly. So on June 19th of this year, human remains were found in a couple of suitcases on Alki Beach in West Seattle. Some teenagers were using the Randonautica app. And if you don't know what that is, I have a whole separate video on that that I'll link below. And the Randonautica app led them to this really strange and awful smelling suitcase located on Alki Beach in West Seattle. They called 911 because they thought maybe it could be a body and the police finally came and found two suitcases. And yes, unfortunately, human remains were found in both of them. The bodies were identified as Jessica Lewis, age 35, and Austin Wenner, age 35. 27. They found that both of them had died from multiple gunshot wounds. The fact that the families had to wait two whole months before they found anything is terrible enough. But just this past Wednesday, two months after the initial recoveries of the body, somebody was finally arrested. It was a 62-year-old man named Michael Lee Dudley. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any photos of him yet. So here's what they think happened. This suspect, Michael Lee Dudley, had rented his home to the two people in South Burien. He did admit that he was having lots of fights with his tenants. And most likely this was because they couldn't really pay the $1,500 per month rent that he was charging them, especially during this whole COVID thing. And he wanted them to leave. Apparently back on June 9th, more than a week before the bodies were found, neighbors had called the police because they had heard gunfire coming from the home. And this is where it gets even more sad. The neighbors actually said that they heard a male voice crying and begging for his life and asking to just leave. One of the witnesses says that she actually went to his residence that night and she even saw what she thought looked like a body under a pile of clothes and she even saw an arm sticking out with blood on it. Dudley saw her and asked her to leave saying that he needed to clean up his mess and she allegedly had returned to the home later where Dudley told her that his gun worked and the other man's didn't. Yes, police did go to the house that night to try to investigate the neighbor's complaints, but when nobody answered the door, they left. Finally, because of all this building evidence, they were able to get a warrant to search the home and that happened just this week. They found pretty much all the evidence they needed. They found bullet holes, they found spent rounds, among other things, and found blood in one of the rooms. The bullet holes also matched the nine millimeter gun that they found in the suspect's car. Dudley gave no explanation for the gunfire when he was arrested. All he said was that Jessica had cut herself before and that was the room she was staying in so he was trying to explain that maybe that's why some of the blood was there but he didn't really answer anything else and they also found that the room that the couple were killed in had also recently been cleaned and painted. So terrible. So there's just been some really odd stuff. First of all the King County Medical Examiner's Office who examined the body said that they were estimated to have died on June June 16th, and then they were found on June 19th. But if they died on June 16th, that would have been a whole week after the neighbors had called the police and complained on June 9th. Now, that's really weird to me and probably to others. It is possible that the state that the remains were found in, having been in the water and in that suitcase dismembered, maybe they couldn't get a completely accurate date that they had actually died, and that was just a really rough estimate based on what they had. But it does seem like they actually died on the 9th. Now, I am obviously not a homicide detective or a medical examiners. So take that with a grain of salt. That's just pure speculation on my part, but that's my best guess for what happened. But overall, that's just kind of a weird detail. And then if you're thinking what I am, it's also super weird that the police just left the night that the neighbors said they were hearing all this chaos happen in the home. And even the witnesses saying they heard these things. And because nobody answered the door, the police just left. I've heard this in a lot of true crime stories that I've read, and it just seems so weird. I am not going to judge the police department on that alone alone because I'm not a police officer, so I have no idea what the rules are and it's totally possible they weren't allowed to enter the home. If you guys hear noise and chaos going on around me, somebody's fire alarm is going off. They're also refurbishing the apartment under me, so just ignore that. Anyway, it does seem just really odd to me that with so much evidence and so many witnesses, they weren't able to go into the home or do more on that night. Like I said, 
not a police officer, so I don't know, but just something to point out. It just seems odd, I guess. It's just a weird detail. And that's an even weirder detail when you match it up with what happened on the day that those teenagers found the suitcases. So according to the teenagers, they called 911 because they weren't sure if it was a body, but it took the police officers hours to get to the crime scene. It took them so long that the tide had started coming in and the suitcases were actually starting to float back out. Now, again, in Seattle, PD's defense, we don't know what else was going on at the station that day. Maybe they were having real emergencies, real medical emergencies, or something way worse was happening to people in real time. And they knew that whatever happened, if the suitcases, they didn't even know if it was a body at the time. The teenager said it could have been rotten food, but if it wasn't, then it could have been a body. So they didn't even know. And even if they did know, the people were already dead. So if they had more important things going on at the station, more immediate and acute crises, then they are going to pay attention to that rather than rushing to this crime scene. I understand people's frustration that it took them so long to get there. And I guess coupled with the fact that they didn't go into the home that night, I mean, it's just kind of a weird investigation in general, but I think it's explainable on both sides. And I think there's probably explanations that the police station have that we don't know about that we're not aware of because we're not police officers, unless you are a police officer, in which case, tell me in the comments below what you think about this and if I'm wrong completely. But just a few of the details together makes it seem like the police department is acting just a little strangely with this case in general. I'm not claiming any conspiracy theories here or anything like that. It's just something that I'm paying attention to and I wonder if more details will come out about it later. So the suspect is being held on $5 million bond, which I guess is good. And we're gonna find out what his exact charges are here in the next few days. So I'm gonna be paying really close attention to this story. I do think it's really great that the families finally got some sort of closure for what happened to their loved ones. I just can't imagine having to go through something so horrible as that as, I mean, for them to go missing in the first place, but then finding them under literally the worst circumstances you ever could my heart just hurts for them and i really hope that this suspect who seems like he did it gets some good time for this hopefully at least life without parole so the families can finally just get some closure and some peace i also live in washington state myself so this case just hits really close to home for me because i feel like this happened so close to me that's gonna be it for this video please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and i will see everybody in the next one